afternoon, everyone on Facebook. Thank you again for tuning in with us today. If you were not able to join us yesterday, I would like to welcome you all to our part two of three for our live moderated college panels. Yesterday, we had the opportunity and the um, pleasure of having Edgewood College online with us sort of walking through some of their timely updates related to the pandemic and COVID-19 for our graduating seniors and their families. And so today, we are excited to have UW-Madison on live with us today to sort of cover the same topics. And so for those of you who weren't able to join yesterday, we know right now throughout the pandemic as a result of COVID-19, all of us are facing challenges that we have not faced before. And so specifically, our graduating seniors, in addition to a lot of the different changes around being celebrated for all of their accomplishments and hard work, we know that there are students at home right now who don't have access to their guidance counselors, don't have access to teachers that they trust who have really been helping and supporting them navigate their transition to post-secondary options. We wanted to create um, here at the Boys and Girls Club an opportunity to provide a platform for our uh, local institutions to share some of those updates with our students and families who might be most in need of those resources and access to those tools during this time. So that's really sort of how we got to this point. So I'm super excited today to have UW-Madison on board with us and ready to share some information with you all and your families. So before we get started, um, I'm gonna have our panelists introduce themselves. So I'm going to remove myself. I can start with introductions. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kayla Jensen. I'm the pre-college programs recruitment manager in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment. So I work with all the wonderful students like you and Boys and Girls Club, AVID programs, any type of after school programs and feel free to send me any questions about admissions or anything else. I can go next. Hello everyone, I am Claudia Mosley. I am the uh, director of the Center for Educational Opportunity at UW-Madison. We have three programs that serve students. Um, student Support Services Program, Student Support Services uh, with a focus on STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math and the Academic Success and Achievement Program. Uh, all of our programs are designed to support students uh, in making sure that you have your higher education dream come true, that you get your degree, and that you uh, achieve all of the goals that you want to achieve while you're in college, whether that includes study abroad, uh, high um, academic excellence, um, and getting engaged in various activities. We want to assist you in doing that. Uh, and I wanted to share that I also was a participant in a similar program. Uh, it was a pre-college program for high school students in Chicago. So I'm very excited to be in this role and I can't wait uh, to answer your questions. Hello everybody, my name is Greg Offerman. I work in the Office of Student Financial Aid at UW-Madison. I work on our advising and outreach team. So we kind of have a dual focus on helping prospective students or new students to UW-Madison um, access higher education. And we also work with a lot of students that um, maybe are an interest in UW-Madison or at least not right away. So we like to help students wherever they wanna go. And then of course, we have a focus on our current students as well to make sure that the financial aid they're receiving is enough to help pay their bills and uh, as far as tuition and room and board goes. So anything financial related, we're happy to help you out and, and help you navigate those, uh, those processes. Hi everybody, um, so my name is Molly Jo Bouch. I am a college advisor with the People Program. So I um, work specifically with, with People Scholars um, in advising and program development and, um, and just being that support system for our scholars. Um, but I'm happy to be here to answer any of your questions about um, going, to, going to UW Madison as a student. Um, I'm a TWICE alum. Um, I did my bachelor's and my master's um, at UW-Madison, so I'm very familiar with um, being on campus and everything, so. All right, and so I just realized I did forget to introduce myself today. And so for those of you who don't know, my name is Glenna Shawley Malone, and I currently serve as the Assistant Vice President of College Persistence and Special Projects with the Boys and Girls Club. And so 
we have formalized partnerships with both Madison College and Edgewood and sort of an informal partnership with UW Madison. And so I'm super excited to be able to um, share this platform um, with an institution that I love working with. So without further ado, I'll kind of walk through what you all can expect today throughout this session. And so now that we've gone through our introductions, we're going to go through um, sort of a moderated FAQ. So we've had the opportunity to collect questions from some of the students that we serve with the Boys and Girls Club and our Avid Tops program, in addition to staff through the Madison Metropolitan School District, as well as the Boys and Girls Club to really formulate some of the high priority questions that our students and families have. And so we'll go through those. And then after that, definitely, if you have any individual questions, please feel free to just add any comments directly to the live comments and we will have a designated time at the end to go through those. If for any reason we don't have the immediate response to a question that you surface and or we run out of time, we will definitely make sure that we collect that question and respond um, following our live moderated session. So um, I guess I'll just jump right into it. And so our first question that we have for you all today is what if any changes have been made to the admissions process and or admissions deadlines at UW-Madison that our students should be aware of? Yeah, great question. So one thing we kind of did earlier this spring when this all started happening was we allowed our students who were, who were students, students to um, be able to go through and request an extension to the May 1st deadline. And so students were able to submit that prior to May 1st if they needed until June 1st to make a decision. So we do have some students, could be some of you out there listening, who are given an extension until June 1st just to have a little bit more time to you know, make their college decision. We know a lot of things have changed. Uh, parent, guardian, you know, job situations may have changed. So we did have a lot of students who are taking the time that they need right now to make that decision about where they want to go. Looking ahead to next fall, we don't have any major changes to announce right now. Uh, we are, of course, monitoring what's happening with things like ACT and SAT testing and really keeping aware of that and seeing that students hopefully later this summer or fall will have the opportunity to take those tests. But if not, we are continuing to work with our chancellor and our governing body to see um, what that might look like for students. Thank you for that, Kayla. Um, it sounds like so far, um, both institutions are really being accommodating to um, an understanding of just where we all are, I think, right now. And so I think that's really important for students to, to just be aware of. Um, the next question that we have, um, and I know you sort of answered this, but just to be more clear um, for those who might be looking into summer enrollment, um, is there still opportunities for students to apply for summer um, courses at this time and or fall classes if they have not already submitted an application? Yeah, so um, our application is no longer open for summer or fall classes. We've you know, admitted the students uh, that we have for the fall. But if you are looking, for example, to start in the spring, that application does open up in the summer. So you can certainly submit an application if you want to start um, in the spring semester in 2020. And so if a student is interested in applying for a spring semester, do they just visit, is it like admissions at wisc.edu? Yeah, our admissions.wisc.edu website, and I can add that in the chat here, has a link to all of our um, deadlines and applications. We also have a lot of virtual options for being able to either visit campus or connect with one of us in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment, get your questions answered, and that's through our Visit Bucky website, which I can also add into the chat too. So even though you might not be able to do an official tour right now, you can still do a virtual tour of campus, hear an information session from one of us, and similar to this, we do have a Q&A feature going in all of our presentations. You'll be able to get your questions answered during that as well. Perfect. Um, and I, I apologize for those of you who were on yesterday. I'm the queen of follow up questions. So as, as you were saying that, Kayla, I had one more question and I know this isn't on, on our FAQ document, but um, one of the things that we've seen um, with some of our graduating seniors through the Boys and Girls Club and Avid Tops, um, as well as, you know, articles in the Chronicle or Inside Higher Ed, there are there has been conversations around graduating seniors contemplating taking a gap semester. 
if that's a student um, who might have already applied, would they need to, do you know at this time if they would need to reapply if they wanted to take that gap semester or um, would their current application still hold true? Yeah, so we do have a deferred enrollment process. Um, I believe that deadline may have passed, but we might still be looking kind of on a case by case basis if students want to take that gap semester or gap year. The nice thing is if students, for example, do decide to reapply entirely, so not do that deferred enrollment process, your application essentially stays good if you paid the application fee or you had a fee waiver on file, as long as you apply again within the next year, uh, you'll be able to kind of reuse that application fee because we know you already paid it. Um, and then just keep us updated if anything has changed. Um, sometimes we'll have students take a gap year and they're just using that time to work, um, save money for college. So they address that in their application about the gap um, and what they're taking. One thing to make note of though, is once you graduate from high school, if you start taking college classes, let's say you're just taking some classes at Madison College or maybe another two-year institution, once you start taking college classes after you graduate from high school, you would change to then be considered a transfer student instead of a freshman applicant. And that comes with some different requirements in terms of how many credits you need. You need to take more classes in order to be eligible for admission. So that's just one thing to be aware of. If that's something you're thinking about, definitely contact our office. Um, we have counselors available every day to be able to chat with you about some of that decision making as well. So we just want to make sure that you're kind of staying on the track for what your goals are. Right. right. Thank you. That's good information. I, I didn't even consider that um, personally. Um, so our next question, um, finances is always a huge part of making that final decision. So I hope you're ready, Greg. Um, <laughs> the first question that we have is, when can I expect to be notified of my award letter? So I'm assuming this is for students who um, have already applied and been accepted to UW-Madison. Yeah, so, so most students should have been offered their financial aid offer already, <clears throat> excuse me. So how the process works typically within about two or three business days after you are admitted then you'll get your financial aid offer from our office um, so hopefully you got it already but if you, if not that's quite all right too um, oftentimes what happens is students will about one out of three students nationwide get selected for a process called verification where we kind of have to double check and, and help you verify the result of your fafsa and so our office will help you with that and so that's something so that, that can, something hold, that up can hold up your, up your financial aid offer as well, as well. Um, and then and specific to w madison we also have a, a residency application process. So it's a, it's a residency for tuition purposes application. And so that's something that will also hold up um, a financial aid offer to go out. So uh, again, we can help you with that. I know the admissions team uh, oftentimes ends up helping students with that process, um, but we can, we can get you through those things and, and help you get over those hurdles to make sure that your financial aid offer gets to you as quickly as possible. Um, so my follow-up question for this is, because um, I know it came up yesterday, if a student is ineligible to complete FAFSA, um, would they still receive an award letter um, if they have been accepted to UW-Madison, or is there um, a different process that they should um, be familiar with? Great question, Glenna. So they, if they have not filed a FAFSA, then they will not be receiving a financial aid offer from us so that the FAFSA is, is what will kind of uh, cause us to be able to offer that. Um, but if you know you're not able to file a FAFSA or, or you don't want to file a FAFSA, you can always get in touch with our office and then we can help you um, kind of identify and, and see what other financial aid options may be out there that have nothing to do with the FAFSA. So students and families, if you know you are unable to complete the FAFSA, definitely reach out to the financial aid office so that they can support you with any of those um, additional resources that may may or may not be available. Um, our next question, um, still on finances, is it too late to apply for additional scholarships and or other financial aid through the university? Never. It's never too late. <laughs> so the, the great thing about our the need-based financial aid or the, the FAFSA required financial aid that we have is we're going to offer you the maximum that we can 
based on the result of your FAFSA. So um, that you'll have all up front. But what we can do, let's say if something something has changed with your with your finances or your family's finances, we can then kind of reassess that result of your FAFSA and then potentially make a change to that. Um, so if, so with how the FAFSA works with prior prior year tax information, um, the FAFSA you filed used 20, uh, 2018 tax information. So if anything has changed after 2018, throughout all of 2019 or even of course the first four months of 2020 here, um, make sure that you get in touch with our office and we can help you through that appeal process. Um, we also have what's called our Wisconsin Scholarship Hub available at UW-Madison and that will help students uh, research, apply for it, and hopefully receive the um, institutional scholarships that we have available from the various schools and colleges. And Greg, maybe if you have a chance, um, as we're kind of going through other questions, if there are um, emails or, or links that we can maybe add to the comments, um, just for our viewers around some of those topics that you just mentioned, um, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, I'll be sure to include those. Thank you. Um, so um, the, the biggest question, right? Some people are probably like, why wasn't this the first one? Um, will classes be remote this summer and or next fall? Everyone's dying to know across the world. <laughs> yeah, right. And everybody, every every school is going to have um, decisions to make, and it, it may it may be similar in certain regions of the country as we're kind of figuring out how states and and now counties are responding individually to these um, to our safer at home measures. Um, but for right now, summer school, of course, is is planning to be online. So any any courses that you're enrolled in during the summer term will be online. And then as it relates to fall, I know we all want answers. And, and I think what we're all hopeful for and, and why we don't have a definitive answer yet from UW-Madison is we want to be, if we can be uh, in person um, with each other on campus, we want to do that. And so we're trying to, I think, kind of just wait and see what's going to happen. But I know campus wants to make a decision here come uh, June or the latest July to see what'll happen, but I know they're looking at three options. One of them being, of course, in-person. Um, one of them being a hybrid in-person and, and some online depending on class size. And then of course, um, an online option as well, like we're doing for summer. So it's wait and see right now, because I think we're hopeful and, and we'll, we'll see what the, the future holds in terms of uh, safety for everybody. But I, but I do know that that decision will be made with, uh, with safety uh, as a priority. Go ahead, Claudia. I think you're on mute though. Okay, I just unmuted. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that in addition to classes, another consideration for summer is um, the orientation um, sessions and uh, those will also be remote. And I want to assure everyone, um, especially uh, families who might want to also learn information as your student is learning um, the process that uh, our advising community is working really hard uh, to have an engaging um, remote process. And then um, I also um, wanted I to, share to share that um, as a part of the Division of Diversity, Equity and Educational Achievement, our Center for Educational Opportunity is working with other directors to, um, to host uh, a, a kind of a kickoff uh, for a particular store that our students, our incoming students uh, will participate in. And so if you are at all interested in the Center for Educational Opportunity and would like to apply to our center, um, I would encourage you to, to do so. Um, and we would encourage you um, to plan on the summer orientation, orientation and uh, advising and registration sessions that occur uh, July 13th, the week of July 13th and the week of, um, or the week of July uh, 20th. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, put that little piece in. And then if I can just go back, I just realized I was so excited to meet everyone that I forgot to mention a very important uh, thing. Uh, for our center, we serve students who are the first, um, first generation college students. So the first in their immediate family uh, to attend college towards a bachelor's degree. Um, if you have parents who have an associate's degree or certificate, you are still eligible uh, for our center um, if they have not um, achieved a bachelor's degree. 
Uh, and we serve students who meet, um, who are income eligible, who meet specific guidelines there, and also students with disabilities. And something unique about our center is that many of our staff people all um, met that criteria in some way as college students as well. So we have experienced that as students, and we are really in tune to making sure that um, we are serving students and, and helping them keep their family informed of their, of their progress. So thank you for indulging me in that. Thank you, Claudia. And I know you mentioned if, if students were interested in that, that they should apply. How should they, or what are the ways in which they can apply to be a part of that? Okay, so our application is currently live. It is an online uh, application. Um, it is um, available on our webpage at the wisc.edu, so UW-Madison's uh, website. Um, I, um, I can provide the link. Um, I can't do that now. I can't multitask. <laughs> but, uh, okay. when, <laughs> when someone else is speaking, I'll uh, put that information up. But you, you can visit our um, web pages um, and look at prospective student, uh, and the information for applying is there. The, unfortunately, we don't have a, it's not set up in that you can start it and then save it and continue later. So once you start it, you need to be prepared to complete the application. So we are really um, careful about providing a list so you know everything that you need to have all of the information you need to gather to complete the application. And so uh, again, I wouldn't start the application until you have all of those things um, together and, uh, and, and right with you um, as you're applying. And uh, we are um, have a priority deadline of July 1st. And um, we have quite a few, we usually have quite a few applicants and, and uh, last year we did have to start a wait list so I would encourage any students who are um, interested to apply as soon as possible. And fun fact, uh, Molly Jo, who is also on this, um, on this panel, was a former student. So she can um, kind of speak to her experience as a participant uh, in our center. And so she, she was a participant and she worked uh, as a student staff member in our office. So she's, she's pretty awesome. She's coming in. Molly Joe, did you want to just maybe say a few words around your experience in the program for students who may be unfamiliar um, with it? For sure. Thanks, Claudia. Claudia um, is also phenomenal. Um, but being a SEAL scholar um, provided like a family that I could um, rely on. Being, you know, a first generation college student coming to UW Madison. Um, I was one of those students that never uh, visited the campus prior to attending, um, even though I'm from Milwaukee, so it's only an hour and a half away. Um, but being part of the, P the CEO program just allowed me to um, make friends right away. Um, they have a, um, they allow students to uh, move in early and they have like an orientation that's a couple of days. So being in that, um, in those sessions and meeting people and building um, community within my cohort was very helpful in my transition to being a college student. And even throughout like my um, college career, like the advisors were super, like Claudia says, they're, they identify with somewhere <laughs> form, um, whether that be like first generation or they were a low income student as well. Um, so just having, um, they were of color, um, so that also was very beneficial to my college experience and being able to relate and um, just be able to build that rapport with, um, with a staff member who was going to be the person that I would ask all my questions to, even if I didn't know what questions to ask. Um, they were, they're non-judgmental. Um, no matter what, what, it, what I brought with me to the table, they accepted me as, um, as myself, as, you know, holistically and everything. Um, so I greatly appreciate that. And um, they definitely helped me throughout, even when I was applying to graduate school, um, they even helped me through that process as well, which I'm really grateful for the program.
if it wasn't for the program, I don't know where I would be right now. <laughs> but um, definitely one of the reasons why I decided to, to begin working with the people program to help a specific um, group of scholars and um, continuing to pay it back and pay it forward. So students, if you have not yet applied to the program and you're interested and maybe even anxious or nervous about how you will transition, how you will create sort of this community um, and a sense of belonging, it sounds like this may be um, based on the eligibility criteria, as long as you fit that, something that you definitely wanna consider. Um, so hopefully you all will get that link so that you can take advantage of that awesome opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Um, it takes a village. Yes. <laughs> Graduating from UW-Madison is not easy. So definitely needing your support system is gonna be important. Absolutely. And if I, if I can add, relationship building is really key and that is really at the core and heart of what, what we do. Um, Glenna, you mentioned at the beginning how there are many students Right now, many of you who are listening who feel disconnected because of this remote environment, and we, we know that and we are very in tune with that. And so for that reason, we are reaching in, reaching around, reaching up and under and making sure that we're connecting with our students. And that is really, um, there are no holds barred. We're calling, we're texting. We if, we if you don't respond to us, we might get on your Facebook page and start posting, uh, please call. So, because we need to know that you are okay, we want to uh, make sure that um, if you have questions, they're getting answered. And then also checking in, have you thought about these things as you're wrapping up the semester? So that is the kind of work we're doing. I, I, I see Molly is nodding because she knows, Molly Jo is nodding because she, yes. she knows that is how, how we work. But it's it's with love, it's it's a lot of love going on. We, are, we, we do work really intentionally to have a family uh, atmosphere. And we, um, our office is even set up when we are on campus. Our office is set up so it feels like a living room. You can come in there, you can literally exhale. Um, students always talk about that. I can just come in here and be myself. Um, they might come in and do work, uh, meet with other students, or actually come in and just uh, take a nap between classes and, and proceed with their day, but they know they're gonna be received with um, a lot of love and support and encouragement. And sometimes if we walk by you and we hear over here you saying, yeah, I'm filling out this app. What application? Do you need help? Come to my office for a minute. Tell me about it. You know, so we we don't wait for you to ask. Um, and then you obviously get to a point where you will ask naturally because you've gotten used to that um, because we want you to seek and you can build your own relationships on campus. So we begin by kind of nurturing that and then you go on and build your relationships and networks on campus. Um, and I do want to thank uh, really quickly the um, Boys and Girls Club of Dane County for those funds that were available. That was something um, we didn't realize was accessible for college students, um, the, those wonderful funds that were raised in the community. And we saw that we that there was some eligibility on our part like an hour or 50 minutes before the application was due. And so this is, there was no way we were gonna pass that up. This was funding we could get for our students to support them. And so we rushed to write it, might've been a typo or two and submitted it <laughs> and, and, and received funds to support our students. So that's the kind of work that we all do. Um, that's what you can expect being a part of our center, someone who's gonna to go to bat for you, who rally around you, uh, who celebrates you, but also um, gives you that encouragement when you need it. And when you come in and say, you know, this is what I wanna do and I don't know where to start, we'll help you um, identify those starting points. And so I just wanna share that with you and I hope you can feel like my heart is even beating fast because I get really excited about getting people started. I, I just want to share this also because I think it's important you you know who you're getting involved with. You know, I went to, I'm from Chicago. I had a really supportive, loving family, but even then a family member told me, why are you going to UW-Madison? You won't make it there. You're too, um, I forgot the word they used, but it was like I wasn't assertive enough or I wasn't aggressive enough to be successful. And while that really hurt me, it did not deter me. And so I came, I got support. I um, I didn't do that great my first semester, I'll be honest, but I, I did not let that deter me and I continued and finished. And I, like Molly Jo, I also received my master's degree from UW-Madison as well after working a while. And so um, that's, that's where we come from. That's what we bring to you. 
And um, I hope that you please share in the chat if you are interested, if you want to learn more, who you are. I would love to uh, see that. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I think I'm so, but I, <laughs> I already earned my degree. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that because I think that's really important for, for students. And um, I just want to reiterate what you said. It's, it's important to know who you're dealing with, right? And sometimes on, you know, um, virtual campus tours or things like that, you don't get those interpersonal connections. And so um, I definitely felt your passion in that, in that response and sort of explanation of who you all are and what you provide and how you support students. So um, thank you for, for that transparency. Um, we're gonna shift gears a little bit with the questions. And so the next question is uh, related to classes and courses and registering. Um, but before we can register, um, students are wanting to know, is it too late to take placement tests for courses? And if not, what is the process to do that? Yeah, great question. So in terms of placement tests, I'll kind of back up a little bit. All freshmen are required to take a math and an English placement test. And we also highly encourage you to take a foreign language tests um, for the foreign language you studied in high school, just in case you end up wanting to continue that language here at UW-Madison. That way you'll have your placement tests and your score in hand and you know which class to register for. Um, right now they are still developing and just almost done working on um, an online version of the placement test. So more information to come on that. I think that might be kind of the theme of today with a lot of our answers, more to come. Uh, but we are developing um, online placement tests. You'll be able to take that. They're also working if students need um, access to computers or technology, um, or maybe you might not have access to um, internet in your home. They are working on making sure that that will be accessible for you as students too. So more to come on that, but it will be an online version that you'll be able to take before your orientation or SOAR this summer. Perfect. And I know generally information um, around placement testing for institutions isn't always um, readily accessible on a website or things like that. So, um, and, and it's okay if, if you don't have a response for this yet, but once that um, online or remote version is complete? Is that something that students are going to have to seek out or would, will, do you know if there will be some sort of a notification for students around that? Yeah, I believe they'll get an email when they have that update available. Um, also kind of on the SOAR, the SOAR website, their summer orientation, they have a really great FAQ that I'll try to post in the chat here that they're updating pretty regularly and it does have a lot of FAQs about placement testing, but also, you know, what will advising look like? How do I pick classes? So if that's something that I know many of you are thinking about right now, what is that online orientation going to look like? We're definitely updating that pretty regularly as well. So I can share out that link. I'm going to bring Greg back here. One second. Bear with us, guys. Could be joining. All right, there he is. Um, so I know you you touched on um, the piece with award letters, um, but there is a second question, and maybe if there are some viewers who uh, weren't able to hear the response the first time around, but if I'm a student who applied and I've been admitted and I have not yet received my award letter, who should I reach out to and or what should I do? Yeah, great question. So you could definitely reach right out to me. Um, my, I'll try and share the contact information here uh, for our, our entire team, but you'll be able to see um, see me for sure. But you can always reach out to our front desk as well. Our phone number is, is 608-262-3060. And if you call, our, our phone hours are, are 10 to 2 right now. So if you call between 10 and 2, you'll be able to uh, talk to any one of our financial aid advisors and they'll be able to help you out with uh, whatever process it is that you're trying to work through, whether it's the verification. Most of the time it's verification or um, working through that residency for tuition purposes application. So um, that all being said, if, you, if you've been selected for verification, you should, you should have already received an email communication about this. So you can always check your email and, and make sure that you're following up with the prompts there to submit the required documentation. Perfect. Thank you again for that. The next question, students want to know, right, we hear and we know um, 
the larger percentage of a student's college experience happens outside of the classroom, right? For those of us who are in the field. And so students want to know, will there still be opportunities to be involved on campus? Um, should there be sort of the, the social distancing requirement, requirement um, still up? For sure, that's a good question. Um, so yes, things are very like up in the air right now. Um, but I mean, there's still like student orgs are still like um, meeting, um, they're just meeting virtually. So um, what's really cool about UW-Madison is um, all of our register registered student orgs are all on one type of platform. So if you go to win.wis.edu, um, will bring you to this platform and you can kind of search um, the different types of types of orgs that you're involved in or that you want to get involved in. Um, and on there will be their contact information um, as well as a description of what they do and um, how to become a member as well as um, some of them will have um, po uh, past events, flyers, photos um, on there as well, depending on how um, updated they keep, those students keep it. Um, but there's definitely ways to um, get involved and stay involved um, and, and build connections um, through um, talking to upper class students and student leaders. Um, there will be a section during um, your online SOAR um, where they'll, you'll be able to talk to students and how to get involved and how to um, make these connections. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Uh, again, a lot of these questions, as we sort of um, previewed at the beginning, um, a lot of information is still up in the air. And so um, some of these we may not have the responses to now, um, or some of those responses may, may change. But the question is, sort of hypothetically, should classes still be remote next fall? Students want to know, do they still need to buy books? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I can take it because a lot of times, uh, well, I'll at least start here, um, but a lot of times the, the books conversation kind of comes up with financial aid. So um, for those that are receiving uh, financial aid through our office, if you're part of the, uh, say, the Fast Track program or your Pell eligible student are, are receiving a financial aid offer that meets your full financial need, you'll likely be receiving some money for books. So the good news is you'll have that available to you, um, but then it'll it'll just kind of depend. It'll be case by case, depending on what the uh, requirements are for your course and, and what they make available um, virtually versus uh, having to pick up a book online or pick up a, a book in person. And then the next question, um, again, related to finances, because um, <laughs> everything sort of stems from that. Uh, we know with campus closures, um, this spring semester students have been impacted specifically on this topic. And so students are wondering specifically for UW-Madison, is there or have there been conversations around work study and campus employment opportunities for students? As we know, many students rely on those opportunities to fund their college experience. So any updates that you all can provide on that topic at this time? Yeah, I can I can start at least from from our perspective in the financial aid. So we have um, our student employment team works uh, a lot of hours really to make sure that employment opportunities are are still existing and can be offered remotely or, or virtually throughout the summer months here and um, into the fall semester, whatever whatever our reality ends up being. So um, I know I know a lot of student jobs are are in places like the union or the dining center and the rec services, and so uh, those those opportunities in person um, are obviously on hold for the summer summer term here for the end of the spring semester, but they're. There's a lot of opportunities that we're trying to build out that students can be trained virtually, they can be onboarded virtually, and then they can perform their their job remotely and virtually just like we all are too. So we're trying to build those opportunities out to make sure that we have a, a, enough opportunities for all those that are interested in working while on campus. Um, all right, um, the next question, um, 
So one, what will SOAR look like? But it might be helpful um, for some graduating seniors and students transitioning to UW Madison to even just sort of briefly give a description of what SOAR is and then what the plans are, what that will look like right now um, during COVID-19. Um, so SOAR is the, it's the, um, it stands for something, student orientation, anybody can help me out on that one. We like acronyms here at UW. Advising and registration. There you go. <laughs> um, but basically, um, SOAR is kind of your introduction to UW-Madison and, um, and trying to figure out classes you want to um, take and your major and kind of just like an overview of UW-Madison student life um, and then some resources available to you, they'll go over. Um, but basically, um, kind of what Kayla said in the beginning um, about placement tests. So you'll wanna take your placement tests um, two weeks before you attend SOAR. Um, it'll be an online um, platform. So um, you'll be kind of going through modules and stuff um, and online sessions, um, but there'll be um, opportunities for you to learn the enrollment tools and information um, and kind of doing some self-exploration with within the, you know, the the UW Madison guide to kind of look through different majors. What are what is the what are the class requirements? Um, what does each different different major mean? Um, kind of like a brief description there is on the guide about um, every major, um, and then you'll have a um, you'll you'll then schedule a meeting with an advisor, um, with an academic advisor to, to kind of go, go through like what you're thinking and. Um, go through what classes you would want to take during the fall semester. Um, and then that advisor will kind of work work with you and um, kind of see um, what those, to see make sure that you're taking classes that will meet requirements as well as meeting um, like our general education requirements as well. Um, and then um, after that, you'll then be able to enroll in those classes. Um, and then there'll be a, probably a follow-up question um, meeting with your advisor just to be sure there is um, if you any questions arise or any um, issues arise while you're enrolling. Um, and then after that, um, there'll be some options in the sense of um, there'll be a, like a live store um, where you'll be able to. Um, You'll be able to talk to um, like student leaders. Um, there'll be like open forums that you can kind of pick and choose if you want to participate in those, um, as well as an um, opportunity to, to connect um, to uh, specific affinity groups um, that you might want to identify with. Um, so that will pretty much be all of store, and it'll be within like a, a full week, is my understanding. And if anybody else wants to jump in, they can comment. I was just going to add a follow up question that I know came up yesterday. So it sounds like during um, SOAR is when um, students will be supported around the actual um, registering of, of their courses. And so a question that came up yesterday that I, I want to make sure we surface here as well. Um, if a student is registered for SOAR, um, but they're, un, un, they're undeclared um, and have really no idea of what they want their intended major to be, um, can they still register for, for classes? And what does that look like without having a declared major at that time? Or even oh, a what they want to do? Yes, absolutely. We have an entire advising office dedicated to students who are undeclared majors. It's the um, cross college advising services. Um, and so uh, the focus would most likely be on general ed requirements, general education requirements. So these are general degree requirements for the university. But um, there will be some conversation. You might have an interest in an area. And if that is the case, 
uh, students are usually encouraged to maybe take a class in that area so you can get more familiar or have a, a taste of it. And then that will might help you either eliminate that as an option or pursue it uh, further. And so um, I, I guess I wanna emphasize that no one should um, feel some type of way for not having a, a, a major decided at this, at this point. Um, actually, there is data that shows that students who began as undeclared um, uh, tend to have a shorter time to graduation uh, because once they make their decision, they've made a solid decision and they continue on that path as opposed to someone like me who um, uh, thought I was going to be pre-pharmacy. <laughs> it took those chemistry classes and this started reevaluating my life. Uh, and so uh, that it took me a little longer to graduate. So, and that happens to other people. I just don't want to throw anybody else under the bus. So I'll use myself as a, as an example. Uh, and so, okay. And uh, Molly Jo is volunteering also. Uh, and that's okay. Too, so. you know, that's okay. We, we have our journeys, but um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, you'll, you'll be able to get started. And again, there's a whole advising team dedicated to um, helping you be successful in selecting courses. Um, and Claudia, I joked yesterday on the live with, with Edward. I said, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. So fret not students. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Even after you graduate sometimes you can find yourself there. So, um, the next question that we have, um, and I know we're, we're almost 10 minutes out, so I wanna make sure we leave some time in case if there are any other questions um, from any of our viewers today, but what resources are there available? Um, and Claudia, I know you spoke on this with your program, um, specifically for first-generation college students. I know that's a very sure. good question. <laughs> sure, and, um, and so, there are a number of resources available. We certainly are a central um, um, location that um, offers great services to students. We have great people uh, working with students. I would highly recommend uh, that students get engaged uh, with our office. Um, and I would offer that even if um, a student may not uh, get involved in our office or for some reason um, we're part of a wait list and um, uh, because we had so many applicants. If you have questions or concerns, you can stop by our office and, and get assistance. But there are other uh, resources available um, across campus that are wonderful to, to students. And so if you're looking for um, academic support um, in uh, specific courses, there are um, learning centers available on campus to provide uh, assistance. Uh, and I want to share too, while they, um, a particular office may not um, be designed um, or have as its mission to serve students who are first generation college students, um, there are a huge number of staff um, and administrators who are or were first generation students. Our, um, our new uh, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs uh, was a first generation college student. She spoke with our students uh, last semester. There are deans, there are uh, advisors, there are faculty members. And so I also want to share that, that you can go into a number of spaces and feel welcome and supported. Um, but our um, Multicultural Student Affairs Office, our, our Division of Diversity, Equity and Educational Achievement hosts a number of programs and events uh, that support uh, all students and uh, particularly um, students of color and students, um, uh, well, first generation college students, students of all identities are welcome and supported. Um, I may be, I'm sorry, I'm so focused on CEO, I might be forgetting something. So, Molly, <laughs> <laughs> people <laughs> um, who uh, people is also part of the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Educational Achievement uh, as well. Um, they're located in the Middleton building um, yeah, on campus. On floor. Okay, you wanna, uh, oh, mm -hmm. on the second floor, but there's also another office for students who might be interested in pre-health or pre-law, uh, a wonderful uh, group of supportive, supportive um, advisors. 
The other office that I mentioned, Cross College Advising Services, that works with first generation, excuse me, with um, students who are um, undeclared or undecided. Wonderful group of folks who help you kind of think about what your interests, your values, your passions are, where you see yourself, and maybe we'll ask you those questions to get you thinking about it um, and help that process along um, in a supportive way. Um, and so those would be some of the offices that I would, oh, and then the College of Letters and Science, um, there's the Center for Academic Excellence um, that is very supportive of students as well. And I'll throw one more in too. There's a, there's actually, Molly Joe mentioned the Wisconsin Involvement Network. There's a, a student organization um, called I'm First. And so that's, it was new this year. And so we've, uh, the Office of Student Financial, Financial Aid has been uh, closely supporting that group. Um, oftentimes with pizza. So if you want to, if you want to come check out the meetings and meet some friends and, and peers in school and uh, have a meal on us, uh, we'll be happy to have you as well. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna, one quick follow-up or, or question before I get to our last question. Um, Molly Joe, I know you're um, representing the People Program and um, without being able to see who sort of tuned in, um, because we're here in Dane County, my assumption is that hopefully there are students who are a part of the program who are tuned in currently. Um, are there any updates from the people program for those specific scholars that students should be aware of related to deadlines or timelines that you want to use this opportunity to maybe just share out? Um, for sure. So um, for our people scholars out there, um, you should be uh, have gotten some emails from Goodson Vu, who is our um, assistant director of the college side of people. And um, right now we typically have our students go through the summer uh, collegiate experience program um, through their summer prior to their fall semester on campus. Um, but with everything um, going on that's now um, canceled. Um, so now we're trying to um, develop virtual programming for our scholars throughout the summer to keep you guys engaged. Um, so like Claudia said um, about SOAR, um, so we're having our scholars um, attend SOAR on two specific um, weeks. So that was um, uh, July 13th and July 20th. And um, so there you'll go through SOAR. Um, you'll de we'll definitely have um, our meeting with um, your meeting with us. So you'll um, be, a, be reached out to your college advisor who you're assigned to and we'll um, definitely want to schedule kind of um, a meeting to check in to see how you're doing, kind of introduce ourselves to you. Um, there'll also be an orientation um, for scholars to attend, which will be, I want to say it's June 16th. Um, and that is when we can, we'll go into a lot more detail of um, what to expect um, in the program and in the weeks to come. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we do have one last question and I'm going to bring Kayla back in. Bear with us here, guys. All right. Um, so our last question is, um, will there be campus housing available in the fall? Yeah, so right now housing is working on all of your housing contracts. Um, if you submitted that and plan to be living on campus, they are working on things like room and roommate and hall assignments. Um, and they are still planning on having those go out in June like they do each year. Um, kind of similar to what Greg talked about earlier with having different contingency plans, of course, based on what the semester might look like. Those are all things that they're considering as well, but they're still moving forward with planning on setting you up with a great experience in campus housing um, and having all of that, you know, ready for all of you in the fall, hopefully. But definitely kind of, you know, as we've been saying, we're considering all the different possibilities and really just working together to ensure that you have a great start to college, um, however that may be. Perfect. Um, and so it doesn't look like on my end, I've seen any questions come through um, from the live feed. And so um, I just wanna 
ask one last question of all of you. So after I pose the question, I'll kind of remove myself so I can bring Greg um, back in. But um, thinking about, you know, some of our viewers who might be on right now, especially those students who are sort of um, giving themselves until that June 1st deadline to make that final concrete decision, um, very important decision, right, for their academic future and post-secondary options. What last words or comments would you give to a student who's sort of on the fence between UW Madison and another institution, um, whether it's, you know, what you really enjoy, um, why you think that might be the best fit. Obviously, contingent, everyone's different, but um, if you had any last parting words for, for any of our student viewers and their families right now on why they should choose UW Madison, um, I'll give you guys each an opportunity to sort of respond to that. And I'm gonna remove myself and bring you back in, Greg. Um, I can I can start, um, and I am a UW Madison alumna, so I didn't get to share that in the beginning. But I went to UW. Um, something that I really love about UW Madison that I think is so special is what's called the Wisconsin Idea, and that's really our whole mission and philosophy as a university. And the, it's it's the idea that what you're learning inside of the classroom should be extended to give back to your community outside of the classroom as well. Um, so if you are thinking about ways you want to give back to your community, make an impact on the you know, global society. I was talking to a student yesterday who has been inspired by the pandemic and now wants to work in public health someday to make a change and better prepare um, the world and, and all of us for when something like this may happen again. So if you are someone who is really passionate about making an impact and giving back in some day, then UW Madison is a place where you can surround yourself with students and faculty and staff who are just as passionate about that as you and are really going to support you in making that happen. I can go next. I um, UW Madison. One, it's a it's a couple of things. One, it's a beautiful campus. So just physically, uh, once we're all able to enjoy the campus again, it's a it's a wonderful environment. Two, it is a um, world renowned uh, research uh, institution. Um, that's one of the things that um, I think I carry with me. I am so proud to, um, and I see this in our graduates, to have successfully completed and navigated. Um, this this huge campus where there's so much learning, so much opportunity to share your ideas and perspectives. Um, uh, you, you're both contributing, you have the opportunity to contribute uh, to knowledge and to uh, gain so much knowledge as part of your journey at UW-Madison. And, you know, let's be real, there have been things in the, in the media um, uh, that uh, have reflected um, the not so great things that um, occur on our campus and in campuses around the country. Uh, and they occurred when I was in school uh, many years ago. I, uh, those experiences also shaped me, they strengthened me, they helped me to um, manage uh, situations uh, that, um, that I don't like. Uh, they uh, helped me to um, understand that um, there are um, politics, um, perceptions, and things that um, not only are they present in the college classroom or on campus or in different environments, but they're going to be present in my workplace uh, with my neighbors uh, when I go uh, anywhere. Um, and so I have been able to um, I won't say successfully, but you learn to manage that um, and to decide how you want to engage with that and be a leader in social activism if you want. Um, and so I really grew and continue to grow uh, with that. And that is not something that uh, would discourage me from working here, obviously, or encouraging folks to come to campus. Um, it is much our campus uh, as anyone else's. We all contribute uh, to the learning and to the excellence that's taking place in research um, and discoveries and innovation. And so I uh, encourage you to be a part of that. And I hope to see you and I hope to see your applications at the Center for Educational Opportunity. I second uh, Claudia's sentiments. Um, you know, Madison is a beautiful campus, uh, research one, renowned 
um, institution, um, scholars all around the world come to UW Madison to study. And you you got accepted to UW Madison. So definitely, you know, you deserved just as much to be here as the next person. Um, and um, and yes, like Claudia said, things aren't aren't always gonna be um, like a piece of cake, and every not everything's gonna be sweet and um, run smoothly. There's gonna be you know hiccups and obstacles and um, and all these um, things that happen during our college career help us grow and put us um, out of our comfort zone and uh, allow us to um, continue to develop and be leaders within our own communities. And I think graduating from UW-Madison um, opens up a lot of doors um, for you know that post post-graduation life. Um, but I definitely, you know, want to encourage you to, you know, pick UW Madison if it if it fits you. Um, and really, really think about like what do you what are you looking for in an institution? And um because we all because we want you to thrive, you know, whatever whatever um, higher education institution you decide to go to attend. Um, because we want you to be successful um, wherever you go. Um, but know that you have a support system here at UW Madison and you can definitely thrive and graduate from this institution. I'll echo Molly Joe's sentiments. I think the that difficulty or that adversity that you face is really what makes it so sweet in the end. So even though UW Madison may be uh, maybe a harder route or more more difficult route academically, socially, otherwise than other places, I think. I think navigating that really sets you up for success in the future. So with that being said, I would really encourage you just to take advantage of the opportunity in front of you right now. Um, you never know what the future is going to bring in, turn, in terms of uh, what we're going through in the pandemic and, and job markets and all that. So but th that being said, with the job markets the way they are right now is the best time to be investing in, investing in yourself, really investing in that higher education and, uh, and, and making that a, a reality. So. Take advantage of the opportunity in front of you, move forward with it, and, and best of luck for all of you. And I see I see a question here from Padone, too, that uh, relates to financial aid, so I'll answer that quick. Um, she says, is it correct now that students' financial aid packages, uh, if students are eligible for remaining funds or a refund, that this amount will be automatically applied to their housing in the fall? Um, that is correct, Padone. We, we now have a combined housing and tuition bill. So previous, uh, in, in past years, it was always two separate bills. So now they're, they're one bill, so it's easier for students. So everything kind of gets paid all at once. Thanks for answering that, Greg. I was definitely gonna, gonna surface that um, and honor that, that question. Um, but now I'm, we're, we're a little over, but I just wanted to take the time to really thank all of you um, for participating and just your willingness to um, make the time for this platform for our students and their families. Again, I can't reiterate enough um, how important it is um, and how many gaps um, I just personally feel in, in interacting with students who are at that graduating senior level and, and just really feeling without Again, as I mentioned um, at the start, that one-on-one -on -one contact with their guidance counselor and or their trusted teacher who has been supporting them throughout all of this time, it, it just isn't the same remotely. Um, and for those who maybe didn't even have that are really maybe feeling sort of lost. So to all of our students and our viewers, I really hope that this information that was shared with you all today from the University of Wisconsin-Madison was extremely helpful in what you needed. And if there are any additional questions that you may have individually, or if after you tune out of this, you think, oh man, I wish I knew the answer to that, um, please feel free to reach out to, if not the Boys and Girls Club, um, directly to, um, and we're, we're gonna get some of those links available on here um, just shortly after um, the live screening so that you all can have access to the contact information for all of the departments that were represented today as well. Um, and so again, just thank you all. 
Um, we had, again, Edgewood College yesterday. Um, thank you again to UW-Madison. And for those of you who are interested and available tomorrow, <laughs> we will be here live again um, via the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County Facebook page. Um, same platform, um, same um, sort of questions with Madison College. So if you're available, please tune in tomorrow. Otherwise, thank you all again for tuning in and please share this live stream with anyone that you think can really benefit from, from this information. Thanks everybody.